Welcome back to The Curtain Boutique, where the change of season has inspired us to create a new feature wall inside the shop on which to display an array of window treatment designs. In this video, we are creating design number one, a lovely swag pelmet with tails and a jabot. They're all going to be this wide, all the pelmets. Okay. And then the jabot will be in this, but it will have that lovely green on the reverse. So this lovely green will be on the reverse of the jabots. Oh, gorgeous. I'm working out the main pattern of the actual pelmet. They're going to be swags in this shape, but they're not going to be um, gathered swags. They're just going to be plain swags. I decided how many swags I want to have on my pelmet. So because it's only 80 centimetres wide, I only want two. If it was wide, obviously, I'd maybe have uh, either larger swags or maybe three. But in this instance, I'm just doing two. I've made the single swag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my pattern on the fabric and I'm going to pin it all the way around. I'll cut all the way up to the corner from down there, round, up to here. And then I'll flip that over. So where I've got my cut, I'll flip that, making sure it's all straight and everything. And then I will cut again, and then all the way up to the top and then across so that I have a double and they're exactly the same. So once I've got that in place, I'm then ready to apply my um, interlining and my uh, lining, which I will show you in the next step. Okay, so going on to the um, inside of the um, palmet now, we're going to put interlining and then on the reverse, we're going to have um, lining. We won't be putting a contrast lining on the actual main part of the palmet because you're not going to see it, but on the tail parts or the jabot parts, uh, we will be putting the um, contrast green um, on the reverse of those. So first of all, I'm just going to cut this piece of um, interlining out. So I'm going to just lay the palmet over the interlining. And I'm going to make sure I allow a little bit, a little bit extra for my um, seam allowance. However, I will be cutting down the seam allowance quite a lot because I won't want it to be in amongst the actual seam because it will be too bulky. So I'm just going to allow a little bit extra, but I'm going to do what's called feathering, which I'm sure a lot of you know, where you'll cut some of it away and then that'll kind of sit, make it sit better. So I'm going to do that on this particular palmet. Okay, that's that one. And then I will cut the other side. Okay, I'm now gonna turn this around. Now you can pin it if you want, but I'm not going to bother because it's such a tiny little palmet. I'll just make sure it's in place and it doesn't move too much. You know, very slightly, but nothing to worry about there. Okay, and then cut it along the top. Just going to cut it again, leaving a bit of extra, but I'll probably cut it away. But I'm always a bit kind of, you know, cautious when it comes to cutting. Right, now I'm going to get my lining. I'm going to just use normal white cotton sateen lining for this particular job. So I'm just going to do exactly what I did a minute ago, leaving a nice little seam out. And well, this is this is doubled up, so I'm going to make sure I cut the first layer off and not two layers. So I will be using this lining for all my other palmets. Right, so first of all, I laid my interlining down. And then I'm going to lay my um, face fabric facing up. 
<laughs> found the right way. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to lay my lining. So I'm just going to lay that on here. And then I'm just going to trim it. I mean, I should have trimmed it first, really, but hey ho, I didn't. So I'm just going to bring it down to where I can see the little, you know, the, the, the actual pelmet bottom parts. I can sort of see just under there, it stops there. So I'm going to cut my lining. A bit tricky to do it with a camera in front of me, but you know, I'm getting good at this. Well, not really actually. <laughs> okay, let's just cut this along here. So this is the right side of the lining. So we're going to turn that over and then put this here. So that when we turn this in half, that's going to be on the back. That's going to be on the front face fabric and then the interlining will be in the inside. So let's turn this over. Now that we've got all our layers together. I'm going to put some pins in and then I will start sewing. Which don't stab yourself. <laughs> I think I'm talking to myself rather than talking to you guys actually when I say make sure you don't stab yourself because <laughs> the amount of times I do it's like you know occupational hazard for me so I don't know whether I've mentioned to you guys but this particular little palmet is for the um, display wall um, on the other side of the shop there's, um, there's six designs which I'm doing this is the first one and I'm fitting them in between work because obviously work's more important than doing design stuff for the shop. But there is a wall that's that's now sort of bare and has nothing on it. So I really want to get it done because I don't like the shop looking. It makes the shop look untidy when it's, you know, things are not put together nice. So I am really wanting to get that done. Right, so that's, that's that. Now I'm going to sew this. Um, I don't need to film this because I'm sure you know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sew all the way down here, round, up to here, round and up to the top. And I'll see you in the next stage when I'm going to turn it inside out. Okay, so I'm now going to turn it inside out, making sure the interlining is on the inside and the lining is on the outside. So I'm going to sort of turn it like this. I have snipped the inside on the corner where it goes up. So snipped it as much as I possibly can so that it sits nice. Um, so I'm just gonna sort of like, kind of get it nice and flat. Um, I've turned it inside out and I've ironed it all out. So it looks really nice. It's quite sturdy, which is what I wanted. Now I will be putting velcro at the top here so i'm going to tuck this under tuck the other under and then hand sew my velcro so that i don't have any nasty stitch lines at the top so that's this for now let's go on to the jabot okay so now we're doing the jabot and i am going to show you what the shape is i'll show i'll tell you how big i'm making this now I'm making it about 17 inches drop. So from the top to the bottom of the edge, it's 18 and a half actually. And then the width of it will be 50 centimeters. So you can make it however much you like, but from the center, it's um, 32. So what I would suggest you do is make your pattern Make sure you've got an inch at the bottom here. 
just you go down make an inch and then from the inch go up to the center of the fabric so i would um get the square cut out turn it in half iron it sort of like at the bottom you know the bottom of it sort of just where the center is going to be just iron it a little bit in the center and then you know where your center point is then so just give it a little pin, mark it with a pin and then you can do your center from the pin to the edge for, to where the the inch comes in at the side so from the inch to the edge you can then put your um your center point in and then you know that's going to be your center for your jabot so that's the shape and i've also got three of the green contrast which goes with it so what we will now do is put our make sure the pattern's running that way with its velvet make sure that's the way the pattern is running so make sure that it's running in the same direction so that is where we're going to sit it and i'm going to turn it over and then i'm going to start pinning it in place down the side along here and then down the other side so that we can start sewing it so pin that one don't need to pin it along the top because we're going to be turning this inside out exactly how we did the actual main palmet part very similar sort of style of work to how we did the main palmet Okay, so I've got this piece of batten, which is um, four by one, four inches by one inch, and I've cut it to the width of the pelmet, and I decided that I'm not going to sew any Velcro on the top, and I'm just going to attach it to the very edge of the wood. So literally an inch from the edge, I'm going to place some um, staples along here, um, and then when it's, I'll show you what it will look like when it's actually stapled. Positioned it so that we've got the ends matched up, and I'm going to start in the middle, and I'm going to just make sure I do plenty of staples. So when that's done. It will sit like that, and then I will put the, I've made the two little tails at the end, so they will sit on the end and that bit will go around the corner. So I'm now going to staple these on as well. Okay, so I've made the outer tails, um, and they're very small because I'm not making it huge. Um, basically, you have to take down, uh, to make this kind of shape. Um, this is always going to be the drop of where you want the tail to be the longest and then obviously this is going to be where you want it to be the shortest. So you cut out a piece like this and make sure that you leave a little little kind of like area here about, of, about, of about an inch and then you go from the end here to um, the top here with your, um, your pencil mark and then you cut along there and then you obviously cut to make sure you cut a left and a right and then i'm going to tuck the top in here and then i'm going to hand stitch this at the top so that um you can't see any stitch lines and then i will um put the velcro on by hand as well because i don't want any stitch lines at the top um and then so what what i'll do first though is i'll pleat it uh, so that it's exactly the right width and all the pleats are in place before I sew the Velcro on because you can't do it before because it'll be too bulky with Velcro tucked under the pleat. So make sure you do all your pleating and then you can sew the Velcro on afterwards. So that's 
that for now and now I'm just going to slip stitch the top and then pleat them up and I'll show you how I pleat them up. Okay so I've now done the sewing at the top and I'm going to just press everything out so it's nice and flat. This fabric seems to be a little bit of a like pulling of it. It nice and flat earlier, and now it seems to be a little bit okay. Right, so this is my side here of the little tail, and it's all been sewn slip stitch along the top. So I'm now going to turn it into sort of a tail. There are no returns on this tail, so this is just a tail. I'm going to be putting a flat return in the fabric on the board. So this is now going to be pleated. So if you go up to sort of about um, six inches and then make your first pleat. So what I'm doing here is um, keeping it all at the top so that it's sandwiched together here. And I'm allowing about two and a half centimeters, so about an inch. Yeah, about an inch from the crease of this first fold to the edge of the tail. And then I'm gonna do this one as well and make the same amount of um, allowance here at the top. So it's like a, about an inch again. And that is your tail. And then obviously you've got the green on the reverse. Um, so you've got, you know, the contrast. I mean, you can do whatever contrast you like. If you wanna do it in the same fabric, by all means do that. It's nice to do a contrast because it, it just looks nicer. I'm going to um, pin it in place and then I shall do some stitches at the top just to keep it in and then um, give it a press as well so we can get rid of any of the little any of the little creases. But, you know, it's, it's going to have a little bit of a... Now, when it's different fabrics, you're going to have like little, not puckers, but, you know, character I call it <laughs> so I'm just going to pin the very top on the crease not all the way through just on the first so I'm doing one pin here and then I'll do another pin on that one so that that holds it in place and then once that's done I will then obviously do a little bit of sewing at the top just to hold these all together because it's very bulky now at the top here. But that is your tail and it will literally sit at the top once I've get sewn the top in place and then stuck some Velcro on. And then this is the board. So the Velcro will be stuck at the very top of this. And then I will show you how it fits together. So that will sit like that once it's uh, Velcro's on. This is our middle jabot. Um, so I am making this um, 18 inches wide or 54 and a, uh, 45 and a half centimeters. And then at the sides, I've made it 17 inches and 43 and a half centimeters. And then in the middle, it goes up by, uh, let's get it right on the centre there, 12 inches or 31, just, just under 31 centimetres. So make your marks. Um, obviously, this is the centre, so fold it in half and then add your, um, your line from the left hand edge to the centre fold it in half and then cut it so that they're equal and turn them right sides together with your contrast. Sew down here, up here, here, here. Clip this bit before you turn it inside out. Then you've got your flat bit. It's a little bit out there, but we lose that in the top. Um, and then we will now fold it and I will show you how to do that now. Okay. So to fold it, so turn it on the wrong side so you've got your contrast fabric. Take your edge and move it to the, the centre. And then make your 
like a pleat so you've got a double pleat going up to the center like that and then do the same thing again so you've got a double pleat now you want to make sure these points here are together so you may have to fiddle a bit with it but once you've done that turn it over you've got to make sure these bits here are right together so what i would do once you've got them together get a couple of pins and pin those in place just so that they're not going to move because it's more important you get that right because then the top will just fall in place anyway so get your pin and do this the other side okay so they're together and then this should all look right here and then just get a pin at the top and pin that in place there you don't have to go all the way through just kind of pick up a little bit from the underneath and that will hold it together and then obviously do the same the other side that is your shabbat show it to you on the bench so that will go in the middle and those bits have got to be together that's it yeah very nice and then i will fit that in the middle so i'll fit the two side ones and then the middle one and then we'll get the um the actual just des design up on our feature wall that we're doing okay so i've got the palmet up i've put the two little mini tails at the side and the jabot in the middle so i've put the velcro on the back of the tails i'll show you how that's done so you've got the tail and the velcro male velcro has been stapled to that part of the board on the edge and then I've sewn hand sewn the velcro onto the tail and then done the other one and that is your finished little helmet don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and like the video and share and I look forward to seeing you next week bye for now